In this tutorial, let's go through importing designs into the Qbot V3 app. I'd like to show you the process of downloading and installing a new design into the Qbot V3 app. On my tablet over here, I have a website that I've purchased designs from in the past, Intelligent Quilting Incorporated, no affiliation. Uh, and here it is at the screen for the download. And it says your downloads, click on the file name to begin downloading. So I'm going to download that and I'm going to uh, allow that, yes, and I'll download it here. And it says Swirly Gig 2 zip downloaded. So I'm going to open that and I can open it with my file manager. So I say, I'll just say just once for this time. And it is a zip file, and a zip file means that it's encoded and packed for distribution over the internet in an efficient manner. So we want to unzip that or extract it. So I will hit extract, and I will call it uh, Whirligig, just like that. And there you can see the extracted files uh, right there. Now let's open up that folder and I can see many different versions of that file. And you will be, you'll see this with just about every design that you download from the internet will have not only the files for Qbot, but it will have maybe a text file or a PDF file, sometimes showing the design itself. And it will have lots of different file extensions for all of the different robotic quilting systems that are on the market. We are only interested in either the .4QB or the .plt file extension. And we can see it here, it's right here is our .plt, which is good news. So we've got that in our storage on our tablet. So let's go to the Qbot um, app itself and we're going to import that design. And once it's imported, we are going to then check to see if the nodes need to be reduced, which is always a good practice. Uh, there are lots of designers in the world and some are very conscious about the number of nodes in a design and some other designers don't really pay attention to that. But it's very important to pay attention to it as a Qbot owner because as we stream those designs over the uh, airwaves through the Bluetooth connection, we want to have as little uh, points as possible to capture the design and not a whole bunch of extraneous points which just take up bandwidth in communication, which it's not that it's a problem, but it it's really only, I should say, it's only a problem if there's lots of, lots of nodes in a very tiny area. So the time it takes to quilt something is much shorter than the time it takes to transfer all those points over. That's when we get into a little bit of a hesitation that we would like to avoid. So I've got my uh, Qbot app running here and I will go into design management and I'm going to import designs and I will check on my download folder and I'm going to look for that Whirligig folder, which is right there. Do we open the folder or import the folder? We're just going to open the folder right now. Open the folder. And then it shows the valid design for our Qbot, which is the Whirligig 2.plt. So I'm going to select that and then say import. And you can see it's importing the design and boom, it shows up on the screen. This is all very good. Now we go into this, we just tap it once and we have a menu that says zoom in, reduce nodes or add to favorites. Let's go ahead and reduce nodes just to see how the design is presented to us. Does it have a lot of nodes? Can we reduce it in some way, make it a little bit smaller? There's the, the, the design. It's got 4,000 nodes. And I would say, I bet you we can reduce this um, because, if, because this is part of an edge to edge, and let's think about it as part of an edge to edge. If we string 10 of these along the design or along the quilt to make the complete edge to edge, that would be 40,000 nodes. And that's a lot of nodes. So let's see if we can reduce it and cut our node count, keeping in mind that this is just one section 
of this edge-to-edge -edge design. So let's take a look at it. Original node count is 4146. I'm going to grab this that dot that I just circled, but I moved the uh, the design behind it. But this green dot, and I'm going to slide this down, and I'm going to go to half. And you can see that instead of 4,146 nodes, we're down to 1,622 nodes already. That's uh, per it's only 39% of the original size. Now let's see if that really affected the quality of the design. So we'll zoom in. And you, when, it does, when it shows the red portion, the red design, that is the reduced part. So red means, well, it's a color, but if, if you want to say red, reduced. It's the reduced uh, nodes version of the design. Now, you can see that it falls right on top of the black uh, version pretty well. If I go too far, let me just go too far you can see it starts to become faceted and it starts to depart from the black line too much. And that will affect the, what you see quilted. But let's go back up, go back up to that middle part. You can see over here in this area right there, it's a little bit off. There it's almost perfect. And I would say that we could save this at a reduced size without losing any of the accuracy of the design. So I'm going to save it as Whirligig 2 Reduced and hit OK. So it's just that simple to take in a design from the internet to your tablet, make sure it goes into your download folder on your tablet. Then when you import designs through design management, you go to import designs, then to the download folder and search for the design or the folder that you've placed there from the download from the internet open it up, look for the PLT, and then import reduce nodes and save. That's as easy as it can be to get a design into Cubot V3.